One of the most common roles a church keyboardist can have is to bridge the transition from the end of the message to a worship song at the end of service. There are lots of things that you can do wrong about this, uh, from your sounds to the way that you play. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the things you can do to get those things right, so you can have smooth and effective transitions. Hi everybody, my name is Peter. Thanks for joining me at Our Worship Sound, where we're working to make worship keyboard technique and technology easier. We're gonna be talking about both of those things, technique and technology, and how you can use both of those things to come together for smooth and effective transitions at the end of your church service. Now we're gonna to to be talking about four inexcusable mistakes that any keyboard can make at the end of service. They're, they're inexcusable, they're not unforgivable, but they are inexcusable. The first mistake that you can make is starting with sounds that are too loud. If you get up at the, you come up to the keyboard at the end of service and the message may be still going or it's wrapping up and you come in with something like this, it's just too much and it's gonna be a big distraction and it's gonna take away from what's being said at that point. So what I like to do is to start from silence. So the first thing I do uh, when I get up to the keyboard is I make sure all of my sounds, whether from my computer or my keyboard are all the way turned down. So on my keyboard, I'll turn down all of my faders and in the software, I will actually have to look at the screen and make sure that everything comes completely down. Um, all the sound layers I could have and all the, uh, the effects that are happening. So when I play my first note, we don't hear anything. And that allows me to slowly fade in whatever sounds I'm going to be playing. Okay, so here you, I'm fading in a pad sound. And my goal is always so that nobody notices that exact moment when the sound starts try to just completely sneak in like that okay um, now I say when I say sounds that are too loud it could mean that the volumes are too loud or it could mean that the tone is just too bright so if you come up with sounds that are just brighter um, even if they're not uh, the volume is too loud it can be too much so we want sounds that are darker for this this point um, just to allow what's being said um, by the speaker to be coming through at that point okay there's a little bit more sound there um, now if you don't have layers uh, like a pad sound for your for your instrument. Uh, all you have is maybe a piano sound. You still want to fade it in, but then even be careful with what you play on piano because the attack of the piano piano is such that it's going to ha just have a little bit more articulation. It might compete with the words that are being spoken a little bit more. One thing you can do instead is to play um, uh, maybe like a Rhodes electric piano type sound, which is just a little bit smoother. Okay. Um, but really, um, see what you can do to uh, get a nice pad sound and just work with that for a while. And as things progress, you might be able to work in your piano. And then as you get close to the song, you can brighten up the sounds a bit if you want. But make sure you start from zero and come up from there. So no loud sounds. That's inexcusable. The second inexcusable mistake is playing in the wrong key. A couple of ways that you can get this wrong. First of all, let's say that uh, I know this really cool progression in A flat but then we go to, to play the song that we're or to sing the song that we're going to do and I have to make this transition to that's not a nice key transition it's kind of jarring and and uh, just doesn't lead to a, a smooth transition so make sure you think ahead about what song you're gonna be playing at the end of service what key is that in make sure you play a chord progression that works and will lead into that key. So start playing the same key that you're doing. Now think through uh, whether that the key that you normally play that song in is going to be appropriate for the end of service because uh, we do this song, um, it's an older hill song called Came to My Rescue and the bridge goes, In my life be lifted high and now, and it goes on, but it's meant to be sung full voice and strong. And so if we're trying to um, kind of ease into it, um, and start soft and go in my life that might be really hard to sing um, in that register so what we could do is transpose the song to a different key and do in my life be lifted high so just be clear uh, about what key that last song is going to be in and make sure you play and start your playing uh, in that same key so be ready to transpose uh, have that skill. If you don't have that skill, work on that skill, being able to transpose songs, um, but make sure that that's the key that you're playing in when you start playing. The third inexcusable mistake is broadcasting the song that you're going to be singing at the end of service and just kind of giving away the secret of what song you're going to be playing because as soon as people figure out 
what song is going to be sung, they, their minds kind of start to go there already, and, and it detracts from the end of the message. So even this song has um, a, a specific timing for the chords that happen in the bridge. And somebody might hear that happening and, and just kind of start to go, oh, I know what song is coming next, and begin to think more about the song um, than what's being said in, in the conclusion of the message. So don't broadcast the song. Keep it uh, keep it kind of a secret until it, it starts to be sung. Um, it, one of the things you can do is just to kind of make up your own chord progression within the key, uh, and that way you're not playing anything that's specific to that song. Um, you can kind of withhold that until it's time. The fourth and final uh, inexcusable mistake is to play at the wrong tempo. Okay, now as we we start to play at the end of service, we're playing soft, we're playing smooth. Sometimes that also leads to playing too slow. Okay, so let's say I'm playing like this tempo one and two and three, and then we it's time to start singing. In my life, be lifted. It's just way too slow and uncomfortable, and it doesn't carry what it's supposed to at that point. So actually, the first thing that I do, even before I start to play a note, is I start the tempo, and we always play. We always play along with a click or a metronome. And if you don't do that, it could be something as simple as having a metro metronome app on your phone, setting it up on silent, starting it, and you can just see it, uh, seeing the beeps on your phone, and that'll get you close enough to what the actual tempo should be. So I can start playing. Okay. Now, one thing about this is I'm playing the right tempo, but now the chord changes are happening kind of fast, and um, I don't want to I don't want to play too fast chord changes. So you could just elongate how long the chords that last. So that's still something that's very much in the background. It's smooth. It's not going to detract uh, from what's being spoken at that point. So. Let's avoid these four inexcusable mistakes as keyboard players. We can do this. Um, let's avoid playing loud sounds. Let's avoid playing in the wrong key. Let's not broadcast the song. And let's not let's make sure we don't start in the wrong tempo. Keep it in the right tempo. Keep it in the right key. And ease into it, and we're going to be in good shape. So hope that was helpful. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. I'm glad that you were able to tune into this video, uh, see me wearing my new shirt. Um, anyway, <laughs> my wife got this shirt for me for family portraits, so I'll just keep it on. But anyway, um, if this video is helpful for you, just click that uh, thumbs up button, uh, like the video, give me a shout out, let me know what you think in the comment section below, click the subscribe button so you get notifications on fewer on future videos. Um, stay tuned at the end of this one. Uh, if you feel like you need uh, more help in knowing what to play, there's going to be a video that it will uh, link to uh, giving you some ideas on, on chord progressions, that kind of thing. And then if you feel like you need more help uh, knowing how you can develop your sounds, there'll be another video to help you with that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.